Hey City Kids, it's Leah here. I am so glad you're taking time out of your incredibly busy week to hang out with us for City Kids at Home. Woo! I know, you guys are all so pumped. I can tell, I can see it on your faces right now, and I love it. So, this month we're talking about jam sessions, okay? Everyone has a part to play. So, we're talking about cooperation or teamwork. When was a time that you can think of when you really needed teamwork or cooperation? Maybe you saw kind of the cover image for this month, the theme, and it's all about music, right? In a band, you gotta trust that the singer knows their music, that the drummer knows the beat and the tempo, and that the guitar player's been practicing at home, and you gotta trust that each of you know your parts. Now, if you're like me though, and you're like, sounds great, but can't really connect to that because I'm not really musically inclined. Then what about sports? Any of you guys play on a sports team, a soccer team, a hockey team, any kind of sports, even in gym class, right? We need to trust that our teammates are gonna put in 110% effort just like we are. We've gotta trust that our coaches know where to place us on the field or on the ice, on the rink. We've gotta know that we can trust our teammates and we have to work together to get the job done. Now before we dive in, I'm just gonna pray for us and just pray that God would teach us something new about how to cooperate with each other, about how to cooperate with Him and what He asks of us. Um, and so would you just close your eyes and bow your heads while we just pray together before we get started. Here we go. Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you that we can be online together. God, thank you for technology. Um, God, we pray that today we would learn something new about um, exa an example of teamwork in the Bible. God, that you would remind us that um, we have a high calling to, to live with you every day, God, to look to you, to say, God, what, can, what do you ask of me today? God, would you help us to love our friends well, love our family well, and just help us to learn something new about who you are and your love for us today. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. Now, City Kids, relax. Actually, I think it's good time for worship pretty soon, so don't get too comfy. Get ready to stand up and sing with us, and then we'll have our lesson, and I'll check back in with you soon. Ever start something small and then discover it was fun to take it big? You read an awesome story and then you bring the whole thing to life for your friends and family. You bake a batch of chocolate chip cookies and they taste so good you recruit friends to put on a whole bake sale. And then you use the money you earn to buy bikes for kids who've never had one. You have fun learning a new way to paint. Then you get together with your friends and paint a whole wall. You send a note to encourage someone. I hope you have a great day. And you also work with your friends to throw an entire surprise party. God created you to do amazing things on your own, but he designed you to do even more when you work together to share his love. And then others can see God at work in all of you. That's why cooperation is a fantastic way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
my name is Haley, and as you can see, I love music. And I mean all kinds of music. Rock music. Country music. Hip hop. I love it all. But my favorite kind of music is the kind that involves cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Take an orchestra, for example. It takes all kinds of cooperation for an orchestra to come together. They've got strings, woodwinds, brass, and of course, percussion. By themselves, those instruments sound just fine. But when they all play together, they really make some noise. And music isn't the only place where cooperation makes a difference. Cooperation shows up in sports, at school, at home, and as we'll see in today's story, in tent building. Really, really, really big tent building. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Exodus. Though the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years, God had led them to freedom in the desert, and now they had to build new lives and a new place where God could live among them. So God called out to their leader, Moses. Come up to me on the mountain. A thick cloud covered the mountain as God spoke with Moses. Tell the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. God gave Moses many rules and laws that would help keep the people safe, but God gave the most detailed instructions for something very special. Have them make a sacred tent for me. I will live among them. Make the holy tent and everything that belongs to it exactly like the pattern I will show you. Okay, ready, taking notes. Make 10 curtains out of finely twisted linen with blue, purple, and bright red yarn. Sew cherubim into the pattern. The curtains must be 42 feet long and six feet wide. Make loops out of blue strips. Ugh, Moses' head must have spun as God gave him very complicated blueprints for a beautiful tent, uh, for all the things that would go inside the tent, and for the elaborate robes the priests would wear. Curtains, uh, lampstands, bowls, uh, altars, incense, robes. God, I, I don't even know where to start. God knew Moses couldn't take on this huge job alone. In fact, God already had it covered. Phew! After Moses had heard all of God's instructions, he came down the mountain and told his assistant, Joshua, Gather all the people. On it. God is going to make a home right here among us. We'll build an epic, amazing, ginormous tent for God. Who wants to volunteer? Maybe you should be a little more specific. Ah, uh, good point. Uh, one thing at a time, uh, Aaron? Moses pointed out his brother, standing near the front. Right here! God has chosen you and your sons to serve as priests in the sacred tent. Oh, we're honored, but, oh, oh well, uh, we need the tent first. Uh, exactly. We'll need a skilled craftsman to head up the whole project. Moses looked out over the crowd. Bezalel, son of Uri. The name spread through the vast crowd, and in moments, a young man with bright eyes and strong hands leapt off a rock and came forward. 
Bezalel, son of Uri, tribe of Judah, at your service. God has chosen you to lead everyone crafting the holy tent. Wow. Okay. Uh, gonna need half a second here. Uh, don't worry. God's filled you with his spirit, with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, all kinds of skill. You're talking about me? Can you make beautiful patterns in gold, silver, and bronze? Well, yes. Can you cut and set stones? Yep. Work with wood? Absolutely. Craft as if Pinterest were already a thing? Theoretically, yes. God will give you all the help you need, starting with uh, a holy ab. Another man stepped up, smile lines crinkling his face. Hey, man, that's me. God also had chosen you and given you special skill in all kinds of crafts. Oh, <laughs> totally rare. And to top it off, God has given both of you the ability to teach others everything you know. All right, we're so on it. We'll train up an entire team. <laughs> there was just one catch. We need to lay in supplies. Yeah, anyone seen a house depot? How about a tents to go? God will take care of it. Uh, uh, we, we need everyone to help. Please bring an offering for the Lord from what you have. Quickly, people came forward to give to the work of the holy tent. Uh, take these gold earrings and this necklace. I can haul in loads of acacia wood on my donkey. I've been saving this purple yarn. I picked the olives for this olive oil. In fact, the people had brought so much, the workers couldn't use it all. Stop. Please, we have more than enough. So under the guidance of Bezalel and Oholiab, a team of men and women stepped up to create the tent. They carved tables and altars and curtain bases. They crafted golden lampstands and bronze bowls. They spun and wove yards and yards of bright colored linen curtains. They sewed special robes for the priests and compounded beautiful <sighs> incense to burn on the altar. At last, the tent of meeting was complete. Moses and all the people gathered together once more. You have done the work just as God commanded. May God bless you all. When everything was finally in place and the priests were ready, a cloud covered the tent and it filled with the glory of God that everyone could see. When the Israelites were wandering in the desert, God asked them to build a big tent. A tent we now call the tabernacle, where people could worship God and where God could live. Oops, you heard that right. God wanted to live with the Israelites in the desert inside of a big traveling tent. And God wanted the people to work together to make it. So. They needed people with all kinds of different gifts. Designers, people who could sew, people who could work with stone and fine metals. Plus, they needed teachers who could train people how to do all of those things. God knew that if they all worked together, they could make something incredible. God has always been big on cooperation. Think of Jesus. He could do so much on his own. He could work miracles, and yet, he chose to work together with a unique group of 12 disciples as he traveled and he taught. God wanted them to work together. And guess what? God wants us to work together too. You see, we are all unique. We all have things we're good at. We could be good at sports or good at math or good at coming up with stories. We could be hard workers or good at solving problems and by ourselves, we could do just fine. But when we work together, when we use our gifts with the gifts of other people, then we can really make some noise. So here's the one thing to remember today. God wants us to work together. Working together helps us get things done faster. It helps us get things done better. Plus, it helps us to grow the relationships with the people all around us. And that is a good thing. Thought we could use a pig finish. <laughs> I'll see you next time!
Wow, I just love this example that God gave um, Moses this idea, right? This vision, this understanding of all the details to go in this tabernacle where God would live among the people. But it was so intricate and there's no way that Moses could have done it on his own, right? There's no way he would have known where to get everything or how to sew those curtains and how to get those gold pieces. And there were so many details that God told him, but because he used other people, it worked. They cooperated together and it worked. Now, let me go back oops, into the verse. I just closed my Bible here. Now's a good time, friends. Maybe go ahead and grab a Bible and follow along with us as we hop back into something we already heard about today, but in Exodus chapter 39, so it's really close to the beginning of the Bible. Exodus 39, big 39, little verses 42 to 43. I'll just read them for us here. It says this. So the people of Israel followed all of the Lord's instructions to Moses. Then Moses inspected all their work. When he found that it had been done just as the Lord had commanded him, he blessed them. Wow, they worked together and accomplished something incredible. God was now living among the people in this beautiful, spectacular tabernacle. Isn't that incredible? All because of their cooperation. Oh, it's such an important reminder. So friends, let's remember this week that we can work together with our friends, with our classmates, with our siblings even, to work together to love God more. Working together or cooperation means working together to do more than you can do alone. Now, City Kids is that time of the week. If you have your City Kids at home box, go ahead and get it open. Grab your Start Here guide and check out this week's activity. If you don't have an at home box, would you send me an email, kids at citychurch.ca, and we will make sure to get that to you. We can mail it or we can drop it by. Um, we would love to get this into your hands so that parents, you are ready to have incredible gospel conversation with your families and so that kids, you have a fun activity to help you remember this month's theme of cooperation. So have an awesome week and we'll see you back next time.